Hi, I'm Alemi from Yayo Botanica. Welcome back. It's so good to see you all. And I love your support and those great comments that you always have below. Remember, we're www.yeyeo. We're a spiritual and wellness supplier, which is why I do videos about all things spiritual. I want to shout out, shout out, shout out. Pew, 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 pew. All my people from India. Woohoo! Thank you so much for tuning in and sharing us with others. Today, I want to share with you some of the mystical and powerful, sometimes forgotten uses of dragon's blood resin. So give me a thumbs up, hit the bell for notification. And if you enjoy this video, comment below and share us with others. So let's get started on learning more about dragon's blood resin. So I wanted to share with you some of these uses that I think that a lot of people who've used dragon's blood don't even realize. And um, many shamans and, and, and root workers may definitely know this, but um, I thought this would be a good time to maybe learn a little bit more about these things that we see oftentimes in the Botanica and not really know some of the uses except for maybe like small descriptions that may be on the, the container. So dragon's blood resin is a resin, which is a sap that comes from a tree, just like frankincense, myrrh, um, benzoin, and different types of resins. Uh, in the 15th century, they said that it was discovered in the Canary Islands, in addition to places like Morocco and some of these other places, that it started to, to kind of find its way where people started to really recognize dragon's blood. And it's usually in places that have a warmer climate. So dragon's blood, um, the vibration is more with the planet Mars. Um, it is the fire element and it, it has a masculine vibration. And so I'm gonna give you a sweet thing about the masculine vibration further on in the video. And definitely, if you're here with me to the end, I'm gonna show you another one of my sweet things and I know you guys love those where you get to learn about how to use dragon's blood in another way. So dragon's blood has been known in India to be used in ceremonies, uh, spiritual ceremonies, face painting, being used uh, to, as a varnish or a stain on furniture because again, it has a very strong kind of red brick color and it does kind of stain a little bit. In China, it was used in painting, painting art. It was also used as an ink to write. And so it's really good to know that it's being used in all these different ways. And even though we really only think about it mostly for um, being used to burn or for spiritual uses. I want to say that we here at, at Yeyeo actually brought one of the first groundbreakers in the Northeast and definitely in the Botanica world to kind of bring out um, red sage or dragon's blood sage. So I'm really happy and proud of that. But in the uses of dragon's blood, I want to share with you some of the main uses and the forms that it comes in. So first, the form, the first form of it is a resin, as I mentioned earlier. It comes as an oil. It comes, you can put it in soap. You can use it with sage dipped in dragon's blood for red sage. You also see it in sticks, stick incense, cone incense, the ink, powders, and so on. Um, we even have a dragon's blood salt. So, so many ways to find it and so many um, routes to use it, so to speak, or methods to use it. 
But dragon's blood is really first known outside of the, the what I mentioned before about face painting, the ink, um, varnish, and so on. And it's from a spiritual perspective outside of using it in ceremonies. Um, it's also used for banishing, uh, blocking, sending away negative energy. It's great for cleaning your home if you have um, negative spirits or any dark energies that are in or around your space. It's great for that. Uh, it's great for protection. It's great for money drawing, right? So you can put it in amulets. You can put it in rituals, add it to rituals for money for banishing, for protection. Um, it's wonderful for doing relationship work. It's great for stabilizing a relationship and strengthening um, love relationships. And I personally think that dragon's blood is really, really nice for men when they're doing ritual because it really already has a masculine vibration, so it works really great. Um, for men. Not that it doesn't work well for women, but it, it's even a little more oomph for, for males that do different types of rituals. Rituals and circles of Wicca, New Age, Hoodoo, folk magic, shamans, white magic workers, dark magic workers, whatever it is that you do, Dragon's Blood is something that can be used for you. And so I wanted to share with you um, some other things that you can put it in, as I said earlier, amulets, you can put add it to amulets, different kind of ritual work, grinding it up and turning it into a powder, maybe putting it in the corners of your home, um, adding it to protection satchels, protection um, incense, and so on. Some of the health purposes or holistic purposes that you can use dragon's blood for are for bed sores, protection from different bacteria and fungi. Some viruses, it can be used for also if you know how to do homeopathic uh, remedies and being able to incorporate it. It's an antimicrobial. It's great for diarrhea. Again, need to know what you're gonna do for the diarrhea, okay? <laughs> um, for some diabetics, in addition to it has been used for some um, homeopathic methods or remedies for people who have different types of cancer and again, different types of ailments. So your shaman would know how to use that. Your, your healer would know how to use that. But I invite you to look at other ways, all these mystical forgotten uses of using dragon's blood. So now I want to show you that sweet thing that I promised you at the end of this video. So let's get started in seeing that. So for all of you lovely, lovely, lovely ones that love to write things for the ancestors, this is Joss paper. And I want to tell them that I love See, this one absorbs a little bit better. So I would say that, you know, depending on the paper that you use. And the Joss paper is excellent because it absorbs. And um, parchment is good too, depending on the parchment. All right, this is using the ink with a quill. This is maybe one of the most ancient ways of using See, do you see how it's starting to bleed into the paper? So, you know, this is really good, like when you're making strong petitions. I'm gonna put some hearts for those of you who may be wanting to do this for love work, but you know, if you're writing a beautiful letter to an ancestor, making a special request or something, you can do that. We'll just add some hearts. I'm just doing this for visual interest for you so that you have an idea of things that you can do with dragon's blood, right? Do you see how that's starting to um, just bleed and, and come out? So I hope that was a wonderful, wonderful exercise for you to try for yourself. 
to see how you can how you can do use dragon's blood, a quill and the ink to write your petition, to write a beautiful love note, anything like that. So now we saw dragon's blood, how it can be used. We learned a little bit about it. So I hope for you, you're gonna try out dragon's blood and let me know if you put them in amulet, amulets or anything special that you do. I love reading your comments. And see you next time. Ashe, Ashe, Ashe. Thanks for watching. If you enjoy this video, like us, share us with others, give me a thumbs up, hit the bell for notifications, and come visit us in the store. Check us out on all social media. See you next time.